Um, today's webinar is an introduction to TechSoup. Um, and while I saw many of you are brand new to TechSoup, I did also see that a few of you have been TechSoup members before or your nonprofit is already a TechSoup member, but maybe you are picking up the relationship with TechSoup because somebody else at your nonprofit has left. So we're going to touch on those things specifically and make sure you get oriented around the pieces that are going to be most helpful to you. Um, but I'm going to start this actually with a quick buzzword alert. Um, TechSoup is a, is a nonprofit like you are. Um, and all of us in the nonprofit world find that sometimes we have phrases and language and ways we talk about things that, that may not be known to other folks that we're speaking to. So I want to quickly pull out a couple that are important in the nonprofit technology world. Um, the first one is digital transformation. Um, lots of folks on this webinar probably know exactly what it is, but maybe not everybody does, And you've pro but you've probably heard the term bandied around. Um, in a very short way of describing it, digital transformation is the process of making your nonprofit more technology savvy. It's moving and using digital tools, both as a way to manage your workload, as a way perhaps to accomplish your mission, or as a way to simply manage staff and payroll at your nonprofit. Nothing more complicated than that. A second term that you may hear during this webinar and other places around uh, nonprofit technology groups is civil society. Civil society is really just non-governmental people and organizations who are working to make a better world, right? We consider nonprofits to be part of civil society. So when we talk about this broad group of people who are working outside of the government, outside of politics, outside of corporations themselves, civil society is the term we use to describe that. And then the third one, again, for lots of folks, this is pretty clear, cloud adoption. Um, cloud adoption is really as nonprofits move towards using cloud-based tools. It's nothing more complicated than that. I call these out at the front of the webinar because lots of times, as I said, there are terms and terminology that we assume everybody knows, but not everybody does know them. So I just wanna put those out there as we get going. And now into the meat of our topic today. You've joined TechSoup as a nonprofit, or you're already working with TechSoup as a nonprofit. But, you know, taking it to the personal realm, as people in my own life ask me every day, what is TechSoup? And it's a good reason to ask that question because TechSoup is a lot of different things. Um, but let's go over that list and kind of talk about which ones might be most important to you. First of all, TechSoup is a 501c3 nonprofit organization in the United States. And globally, we are a global network of nonprofits and NGOs around the world, all trying to work together to share resources, to share advice, insights, um, and help each other do the good work of building a more sustainable, better planet. The second thing TechSoup is, beyond just being a nonprofit and an NGO itself, is, a tech, is an organization with a mission. And our specific mission is to support nonprofits and NGOs as they work with technology to help build a more equitable planet. In other words, we have a perspective. We think that technology can help, but we also know that technology can be very challenging. So, TechSoup's mission is to help plug the holes and help nonprofits and NGOs understand how to use technology, which technology to use, and what options there are in the marketplace for them. The third thing that TechSoup is, particularly on that front, is a catalog of affordable technology products from major technology brands like Microsoft, Dell, Intuit, Adobe, and many, many more. Part of what we decided at the early onset of TechSoup's formation is that we needed to help nonprofits actually get the affordable deals on tech products that really make them usable in the real world. After all, if things are extremely expensive 
and a tool is out of reach for that reason, then you have to find other ways to work with it. We think that we can help nonprofits by providing affordable access to technology tools. But in the modern world, as we all know, getting access to a tech tool is not enough anymore. There's a certain amount of expertise that has to come with that to help choose the right tools, to implement and deploy those tools, and then to manage them. And so one of the big new areas that TechSoup has been working to provide nonprofits are services which stand next to the tools we offer through the catalog. Services to help you choose, install, and manage the software and hardware that your nonprofit relies on. And then finally, we also know that education and training is a key part of making technology more usable and accessible to nonprofit staff, to nonprofit board members, and to nonprofit volunteers. So in addition to the catalog of technology we offer, in addition to the services that we offer, we also offer courses and trainings to help nonprofit staff and volunteers and board members become more digitally able so that they can understand the tools you have access to um, and just enhance your technology skills. Finally, TechSoup is also, since we are a 501c3 like you are, we are also a grant-based programming nonprofit. We run our own programs using grant-based funding, just like you do, where we write to funders and philanthropy organizations and philanthropists, and we propose ideas and we apply for grants and we win some, we don't win them all. Everybody knows what that's like, but we do have our own programming that we run using those grants. And almost always, of course, it's around technology, technology adoption, and helping civil society bring technology in to solve big problems. So already you can see technology and TechSoup is a very complicated thing, actually. We have a lot of different areas that we touch nonprofits and that we try to help. Um, and so hopefully this gives a little broader perspective on all the different roles that TechSoup plays. So now let's go a little bit deeper into how those roles are helpful to you in your work as a nonprofit, regardless of what your mission is. So let's first of all talk about, like you, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And that really matters a lot because one thing that is very true is 501c3s operate very differently than a small business or a large corporation. We have very different books that we have to run. Um, our revenue streams and budgeting processes are very different than for-profit organizations. Um, and so one of the first things that's important to call out here is that since we are a 501c3, that means we understand those budget cycles and those revenue parameters that other nonprofits have to work with. And that's important because plenty of businesses can offer services and other technology items, but they may not fully understand the financial picture of nonprofits, but we do because we are one. Um, as I said, we believe technology can help you. Um, and we believe that that's true, not just here in the United States, but globally. And we work with other nonprofits and NGOs around the world to make that happen. And as I've already mentioned, we do believe that cost can be a major blocker for nonprofits. Um, and that's why the catalog that I mentioned a few minutes ago is a place where we have negotiated with corporations and companies who want to do good in the world. They want to share the technology products that they've built. And we work with them to negotiate pricing for nonprofits so that you can save some money on the front end um, and be sure to have the resources available to uh you know, implement that technology and manage it over time. Um, some of our own studies internally of nonprofits say that um, nonprofits that have worked with us for a long time on their tech needs have saved over $18,000 in their lifetime membership. That number shifts a bit because technology costs different amounts of money uh, in different parts of the world. And of course, it's different now than it was 20 years ago. And TechSoup has been around for a few decades now. But it is to say that nonprofits that have worked with us for a long time really can save quite a bit of money by working with TechSoup. 
And finally, we do believe that that education and training is another blocker, and that's why we provide that to nonprofits. Now let's talk about the TechSoup catalog specifically, because this is a place where most nonprofits come to us first. They've heard that TechSoup has offers in a catalog from these different technology brands. And now you've joined TechSoup, you've become a member, you're authorized to use the catalog. But how does the catalog work? What's in there? That's what we're looking at now. So this is the TechSoup website I have up on the screen. It's uh, techsoup.org in the United States. And there's two very quick, easy ways to get to that product catalog. I've got them both circled in red here. Should be fairly obvious on the page. You just click those links and you're going to take you straight into the actual catalog of what we've got available. And I'm going to highlight a few of the specific offers that we find most nonprofits really gravitate toward. They form some of the most popular and common offers that nonprofits take from TechSoup. The first one is Microsoft. Um, and of course, if you are running a PC and you're using Windows or you're using Office, you're using Microsoft products. Um, and it is by far the largest um, partner that TechSoup has worked with for decades now. Um, and at the moment, there are a few specific offers from Microsoft that are worth highlighting. One is Microsoft 365, um, which is the cloud-based Microsoft Office, basically. Think of the suite of programs, Excel, Word, Outlook, those kinds of things that have usually come bundled. If you've been around for a long time, you know you used to get those on a compact disc. Remember back in the day when that was the medium of choice in which you got software. But now, of course, it's all downloaded directly from the internet. Um, but TechSoup works directly with Microsoft, and we help nonprofits choose and implement Microsoft Office 365 solutions every day. And uh, our friend Kevin Mulhall, also on the call here with the customer success team, will go into those a little bit more in a little bit. Um, if you're not using Microsoft's cloud-based offers, um, you're still using Office on-premises, which means you're just loading it onto a single computer. Um, we do have those products available as well from Microsoft. And then finally, the third one that everybody knows about probably is Windows 11. That is now the standard for what you would be running on a PC. And you can get the Windows 11 Pro full operating system through TechSoup. And you can also get the upgrade of the Windows 11 operating system through TechSoup. Another partner that we find is extremely popular with nonprofits, especially if you're engaged in a communications role where you have to do design um, or graphics in particular, is Adobe. Um, I've been a big user of Adobe products for most of my career in technology. I love working with design platforms. I have really loved working with Adobe's products for many, many, many years. I've made a movie with them. I've designed numerous brochures. And they are one of the most popular items in the catalog. Um, Creative Cloud is the central uh, piece of Adobe's offer. It is the well-known suite of different tools such as Dreamweaver, InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop, and many, many, many more. Um, if you are a communications director at your nonprofit, or if you have a specific designer or communications person, these Adobe offers are really something that they'd be very interested in knowing about. Another part of the Adobe catalog <clears throat> that's standalone is Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. Adobe invented the PDF, right? That document that we all now share online, um, that's an invention from Adobe. And Acrobat Pro DC is the cloud-based software that really has the most power around these PDFs. You can create PDFs, you can edit them, you can lock them so that they're secure and uneditable. Um, and <clears throat> from looking at the types of nonprofits that use um, Adobe products from TechSoup in particular, I have noticed over time that nonprofits that do a lot of legal work in particular tend to really gravitate towards Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. 
And then a new offer in the catalog from Adobe <clears throat> just within the last month is called Adobe Express. I haven't used Adobe Express yet, but at the moment, it is actually free in our catalog. And as I understand it, it's a scaled down but very powerful version of Creative Cloud. So if you don't need the entire Creative Cloud suite, Express may actually offer the communications tools that your nonprofit would be able to use, perhaps with a lower bar for expertise and training on that. There are also Creative Cloud for Education Teams memberships available through TechSoup. That's a more sophisticated offer, but again, for a larger nonprofit, which is working with teams, that's possible as well. Um, Intuit QuickBooks is another extremely popular offer from TechSoup that nonprofits take advantage of all the, long, all the time. Um, QuickBooks Online Plus in particular and Online Advanced are the two um, that nonprofits gravitate towards right now. Um, and uh, I should say that you're going to receive a copy of this slide deck that I'm sharing on screen um, at the end of this webinar. And all these underlined links will work in the document. So if you are thinking about um, Intuit QuickBooks for your nonprofit, in particular, I'm going to call out this QuickBooks Online FAQ. Great resource for you to click into and check in on whether or not um, QuickBooks Online is something that your nonprofit ought to be using. So those are not the only brands available in the TechSoup catalog. There are dozens of other brands, but I wanted to highlight those in particular because they are three of the most popular you know, but as you can see here, there are several other brands that are also available, stuff that you very well know, DocuSign, Norton, Asana, AWS. Um, one thing to be aware of is that some of the offers in the TechSoup catalog, and Kelly Garrett will touch on this a little bit later, do have some limits based on the size of your nonprofit or on the mission type of your nonprofit. So it's always good to keep that in mind. And when you're looking at a product in the TechSoup catalog that you might think your nonprofit should use, you should be aware to check the eligibility restrictions that may exist for that nonprofit. But as again, Kelly will touch on that. Um, hardware is another place where TechSoup is playing an active role helping nonprofits afford technology, right? So software is one thing, but we need the machines to run all of it. Um, and of course, we're all well aware that over the last two and a half years under COVID, the supply chain issues that have impacted the availability of hardware and the cost of hardware have both been significant. Um, TechSoup offers several different uh, abilities to gain access to hardware products from us. Um, we have both new and refurbished lines of laptops and desktops, and we also provide access to servers networking products, internet hotspots, and headsets, all available through the TechSoup catalog, again, priced uh, at a level to make them affordable for nonprofits so that you don't have to spend all your money just getting new hardware. Um, and then in terms of like three that are ex particularly well-known brands of hardware companies that we work with that provide uh, new items through TechSoup, Dell, Lenovo, and HP are extremely popular brands with nonprofits in the TechSoup catalog. And again, um, once you get this deck after the webinar, you will be able to click straight through to these and take a look at what's available. Um, JourneyEd is another um, hardware brand that we work with that has lots of um, opportunities to get mice and smaller pieces of hardware. And then finally, as I mentioned, we do have access to refurbished hardware. These are not brand new computers, but they're newer computers that have gone through a whole process of making sure that they're still functioning, that everything's working correctly. And usually it's a great place where you can actually save some money um, if you don't want to spend the, the cost of a brand new laptop. You may be able to find a refurbished laptop that's a year or two older than a brand new one um, uh, at a very affordable rate through our refurbished hardware catalog. Um, to get to the hardware catalog, you'll actually need to click through to the product catalog and then the hardware um, drop down, the hardware menus on the left there. 
a um, little bit hard to find unless you know that right off the bat. So I'm just calling it out in this slide here. All right. Now, as I said, beyond just providing access to software and hardware, TechSoup also understands very clearly that nonprofits need more support than just here are a bunch of products, now go do what you will. Over time, it's become clear that there is a big market and a big need for services to support nonprofits as they choose software and hardware that they need, as they implement it and you know, integrate it with their existing systems. And then finally, manage it over time, make sure that updates are applied to it properly, configurations are made when they're needed. Um, and so we have a suite of different services that we now offer to nonprofits to help with those technology questions. There are several different ones, and this line of services is always evolving as we realize there are more needs out there. But to see quickly which services are available from TechSoup, you would just go to the services drop down in the main menu on the home page, and you can kind of go through those and see if any of them are of particular need or interest to your nonprofit. Um, the digital assessment tool, the very first thing there is an interesting tool where you can go through and uh, click and answer some questions that will help you actually evaluate your nonprofit's digital maturity. Um, help Desk is a quick way to get one-off help on particular things. Office 365 here is a service that we offer for folks going to the Microsoft product. Managed IT is for a larger long-term commitment where you really want help managing your, um, your technology stack. Website services and digital marketing are very core communications functions that TechSoup can support you with. And then TechSoup courses in particular, as I mentioned earlier, opportunity for training and education for your staff, your volunteers, your board members. I'm going to skip over Boost and Consultant Connection for now. Um, the help desk service is $35 a month or $350 annually for unlimited support on, on one specific device. So if you're a very small nonprofit, you perhaps only have one computer that you really need help with, that would be the option there. Um, the Office 365 email and data migration service is how we can help your nonprofit implement Office 365 and get your email plugged into it properly. Um, so that it's pulling down your inbox and you're able to use it. Um, there's also remote office standard or pro installation support. So if you're using the on-premises version, um, you can get help with that as well. Managed IT, as I mentioned, is the enterprise level systems management, which means like if you're a larger nonprofit, you want help managing the whole technology stack. Uh, then that is a place where you can get that help. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the digital assessment tool can help you kind of understand what your um, nonprofit's level of digital maturity is. All right. Um, website and digital marketing services. Um, we help with evaluation, security, and development. Um, but the main thing I think that is most important to call out here is that over the last several years, as we've surveyed nonprofits, it's become super clear to me in my role that technology as a communications tool specifically is one of the most important parts where nonprofits want help and need help. Um, and so uh, perhaps you're not looking at an Office 365 implementation and instead you're like, ah, we just need help with our website. Those are services that TechSoup can also provide. And so I'd encourage you to reach out to us and fill out an intake form and uh, start having a conversation about how we could help with your site. Um, and then if it's more that you want help with uh, figuring out how to run your outbound email program, we can help with those kinds of things as well. Um, and finally, we're also pioneering at the moment a Google Ad Grants service. Um, as many of you probably know, uh, Google does provide nonprofits with up to $10,000 in an online grant so that you can use the Google Ads platform um, for your nonprofit. 
it's a great offer, but lots of nonprofits struggle with exactly what they should do with that, how they should implement it, and how it works. And so we are pioneering a service at the moment to help nonprofits figure that out. Now, let's be totally clear. These services aren't free. It's not the case that you can just call TechSoup and for zero money, get all the detailed help that you need. But the services don't cost what you would probably expect to pay at a large corporation or a large consulting firm. Um, and they are really designed to work specifically with nonprofits. So while they cost money, again, our goal is to make this stuff affordable for nonprofits so that you can use the technology to accomplish your mission. Um, TechSoup courses is a pretty important part of our offer as well. Just showing you here in the menu again where that is. Um, and TechSoup courses is a little interesting because it requires a separate login. So when you go to the TechSoup courses platform, you need to set up another sign in. Sorry about that. I know it's a little awkward, but you know what? Most people do it, no problem. So I'm just saying if, uh, if you go to take TechSoup courses or look at them, you'll want to set up that separate account. Um, but there are an awful lot of different great opportunities to learn all sorts of different technology topics there. We have a very robust set of courses that we've worked in partnership with Microsoft on. Um, and uh, if you just feel like it's education that you need right now, more than you need an actual product, I encourage you to go check out TechSoup courses, see if there's a track of courses in there that maybe answers uh, the questions that you have. And, you know, like many um, learning environments, these courses are structured as 100 level, 200 level, 300 level, or in easier terms, there's like beginners, intermediate, and advanced. Most of the beginner courses are free of charge. They are designed really to bring people up to speed. Once you get into the intermediate and the advanced level courses, there is a cost with many of those courses. But again, specifically priced because we know that nonprofits need this help. We don't want to break anybody's bank or break anybody's budget. They're designed to be affordable so that you can get access to the information and knowledge that you need. So let's talk a little bit about what some of those are. We've had over 70,000 learners come through those courses. We do have bilingual English and Spanish courses in there, although honestly not all of them are that at the moment, but we're trying super hard to make that more so. Um, as I said, they're all designed specifically for nonprofits, and the great advantage to these courses is anyone can sign up. So your staff, your volunteers, board members, anybody working with your nonprofit can sign up. Um, and as I said, there are an awful lot of different topic areas. And once you get this deck, just click through this link here. It will take you into what those different options, uh, what those different uh, course tracks and topic areas are. Um, and uh, the Microsoft Digital Skills Center in particular is um, something we've worked with Microsoft to develop. So if you need better Excel skills or you're trying to figure out how to do something in Word or Outlook, that's where you want to go. Um, here's an example. This is called the Nonprofit Foundational Skills Track. Uh, and as you can see, it's a series of 101 and 201 courses um, that take you through a whole different series of digital skills from project management to advanced Excel. Um, I think we all had a lot to learn in the last two years about how to organize and manage remote work teams. Um, fundraising is always a top, top, top topic for uh, nonprofits looking to build skills. Um, and then grant writing and management, you know, kind of linked quite directly there with fundraising itself. Nowadays, you know that if you're talking with supporters or potential users of your nonprofit services, you have to have an email marketing stack. You have to be talking to people through email itself. As I mentioned also, Google ad grants are a thing that many nonprofits are working to figure out how to use better. Um, and then there's even tech planning and cybersecurity options. And this is all just one track of learning through the TechSoup courses platform. So if those topics sound interesting, as if you and your staff could learn something from them, I encourage you to check that out. Um, 
I'm now going to pivot into a little more detail on the Microsoft Cloud sections, and we're going to invite Kevin Mulhall to come up from the customer success team and talk about the Microsoft Cloud opportunities. But I also want to say, I know that we've already gone through in the last 30 minutes a lot of content, and I do see quite a bit of... Um, questions and activity in chat. That's a great place to be asking these questions. Um, Kelly and Kevin are incredibly skilled at quickly steering folks towards the uh, resources that they probably will find most helpful. So keep asking those questions in chat. Um, and uh, I'll uh, ask Kevin to come up off of mute and um, we can talk a little bit more about Microsoft Cloud. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Uh, were we going to grab some of those questions uh, in advance, or did you just want me just to get right into it? Just go right into it. Okay, perfect. So thank you again, Nick. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you all today. Again, my name is Kevin Mohol. I'm a technical customer success manager here at TechSoup. For those of you joining us today uh, that may not have heard of my team, that's completely understandable, as we just recently celebrated what I like to call our first birthday. Um, I'll have some additional items uh, regarding our team momentarily. Uh, before beginning, though, I'd like to start with a quick poll question. Uh, Rita, if you have the ability to uh, spin that up. Give me one second. I just got it. Awesome. Thank you. So the question you'll see uh, popping uh, up on your screen momentarily. Um, and out of curiosity, uh, is your organization currently using Microsoft or Office 365? Uh, when it does appear, there's a, no obligation, of course, to answer. Um, we'll give uh, about a minute or two uh, to see where everybody's at. These, this is always exciting to see. I think our last, um, our last session, it was yeses were like around 67%, which I, I found actually kind of low. Uh, it was uh, very, very curious uh, to see where we're at here now. So we'll give it uh, about 10 more seconds here. Looks like most of the answers have come in. Perfect. Okay. 80%. Wow. Okay. So this group is a little bit more familiar with that. So some of the things I may be saying um, you may already be familiar with. So we're going to go ahead here uh, and on to this. On to this uh, next slide. So speaking to Microsoft Cloud Offers, uh, here we have a breakdown of the various 365 subscription types. Beginning with web-only offers, such as Microsoft Business Basic, which is free up to 300 users for full-time, part-time, or contract employees, as well as vendors. Uh, if you have volunteers, uh, that are needing to access licenses. Specifically, Microsoft has what's called the F1 or F3 or frontline license uh, for supporting your organization in that capacity. Um, for the sake of time, um, I'm not going to dive into um, all of the rest of the items one by one uh, that you see here, but I do want you to be aware that 365 exists in what we'll call two flavors, uh, web only or hybrid. A web-only license is what it kind of implies, is that you can only access the application or application stack through the internet. A hybrid license, an example of that would be the Microsoft 365 Business Premium, or the Office 365 E3 license, provides you an Office 365 desktop entitlement. A lot of words, a lot to understand. Basically what that is, is the office suite that you've known and loved and have probably used for years or even decades uh, is actually included uh, as part of your subscription. The great thing about that is the installation process does not involve an answer file, which for those that are still using the on-premise version, that's the thing that you're probably have become familiar with uh, through the office deployment toolkit, that's gone. It's the old MSI click to run, it's super simple, super easy to get set up. The only thing that you need to make sure that you have in place is a business or professional version of Windows, Windows 10, Windows 11 operating system uh, on the device. So getting down really quickly to the um, last part here. 
Some of you may be familiar with Power BI, an excellent analytical tool, and then Microsoft Azure. I wanted to spend a little bit more time just talking about this than going into license by license because uh, for those of you that may not be familiar, Azure has a grant program. Uh, the grant itself is $3,500 yearly. Uh, there's over 200 different services available as part of Azure. I'm personally Azure certified, so I probably know most of them. Uh, and it's pretty incredible what you can do if you understand uh, Azure services, things like backups, file storage, even application development for those that maybe have a, a higher technical environment. Uh, it's an incredible tool. Um, I am a big fan of Azure. Um, I think it's definitely worth applying for and looking into if you haven't. Uh, next slide. Okay, so for those that are interested, I think it, again, it was like around 20% um, to begin the journey toward accessing Microsoft Cloud Solutions uh, for your organization. There's a three-step process. Uh, you can see the three uh, dots here or the three uh, numbers with the circles uh, that kind of illustrates what's going to be done here. So just going over them uh, kind of quickly, um, the first thing you'll need to do is to create an account uh, at the Microsoft nonprofit portal. Next, you'll need to have that account validated by our validation service team. This is a service we provide for Microsoft on the back end. And it typically takes between five to seven business days. Please note that it can take longer, um, but typically the process, if, if done correctly, uh, moves uh, rather smoothly. And the final part of the process uh, is what we refer to as introducing the TechSoup Cloud Manager or Cloud Manager tool uh, within an authorized user account. Uh, introducing this tool will allow access to the storefront where you'll be able to begin purchasing licenses. I know it sounds like a lot, um, and we want you to know that if you find yourself stuck in any part of this process, we have a team at the ready to assist um, via uh, email or even chat support, which is highlighted here in the bottom right uh, corner uh, to assist um, at any part of the process wherever you identify that you need help. Next slide. Again, understanding that the move to the cloud can be a challenge for organizations, we do offer a free consultation service through our CSP channels. During a session, we'll be able to assist with registration, choosing the appropriate subscription, license, provide recommendations for services and courses, license implementation, and ongoing support to you at no cost. One really quick thing that I didn't have on my notes, but I do wanna add is that we have this awesome thing called advanced support for partners. Uh, it's actually something we pay for uh, and you get to benefit for for absolutely free. And the next slide, please. And so as I promised, I just put together just something really quick to introduce myself a little bit more and an overview of what my team does um, as part of this whole um, uh, makeup here with uh, surrounding cloud and technology services for the sake of time. I've broken it down into five general areas. First, technology review and planning, organizational strategy, identifying opportunities for potential financial and volunteer support, triaging managed support projects and services, alluding to earlier to what Nick had mentioned about our managed partner providers, and then providing quotes and invoices for bulk product requests. So with that, uh, I am going to hand this back over uh, to either you, Nick, or Aretha. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Um, and yeah, to reiterate, what Kevin's team is the customer success team. Um, and, and really what that means is it's TechSoup's dedication to making sure nonprofits get out of this what it is they need. We are most invested in your success. The whole point of our mission is to help you with technology. And so Kevin's team is a central piece of that. And thanks again, Kevin. Great to have you today. Um, the other essential part of this is our client services team. And I'm super excited to bring in Kelly Garrett, who has worked with TechSoup nonprofits for years now, helping them get the questions answered that are central to keeping things clear. And so, Kelly, come off mute, and I'm going to go away here and take it away. 
everybody. I'm Kelly. I am the Associate Manager of the Client Services Department here at TechSoup. Um, client services is basically customer service, but we do a bit more than that. We help with account management. We help with the qualification of your organization, um, basically making sure you, you know, you've all probably gone through this at this point, making sure you have your 501c3 nonprofit status or the proper status you need for your library, double checking your organization type things along those lines. Uh, we also provide limited support for the products that are available on our TechSoup catalog. Um, we are not IT trained and we are not uh, in-depth product trained, but we are trained to answer some basic questions, help point you kind of in the right direction of something you might be looking for, and answer general questions about programs and what TechSoup's doing and things along those lines. Um, so when you do contact customer service, you are talking to the client service department, you're talking to my team, um, and we are really excited and really enthusiastic to help you. Um, most of us, you know, got into this field because we love nonprofits, we love helping nonprofits. Um, so whenever you contact us, we are always doing our best um, to make sure you're able to fulfill your mission and um, get your vision seen as well. Perfect. So Nick, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide. Awesome. <clears throat> so something I do like to go over before we go into how you can get support from us is pointing out where you can find information on our website, www.techsoup.org. Um, this is where you manage your account. Um, this is where you add products to your cart or you access, access a validation token, um, which allows you to access portals off of our website. Google for nonprofits, for example, uses validation tokens that you can use to get going with a Google for Nonprofits account, um, things along those lines. Um, one of the biggest things that we get contacted about is asking about product information because uh, someone wasn't able to find it on our website. So I literally like to point out there are always gonna be three tabs on every product page. So say you search the product um, on our website or you go to that donor or company drop down in the top right or uh, top left corner, my rights and lefts. <laughs> uh, the top left corner there underneath tech soup, you'll see donor or company, you'll see category and you'll see hardware. These are great places to go to get started to try to find, you know, I know that I like Adobe. I don't know what Adobe products are offered. You go to the donor or company dropdown. If you're looking for graphic design things or website management, um, you can go to the category dropdown. So that's a great place to kind of get started. And once you find a product you're interested in, you click on that product and that pulls up this product page. And on the product page, you try to list as much detail as possible to really help your organization make the right choice on which product or service you're interested in. Um, for example, this is the QuickBooks Online Plus product page, and you'll see highlighted are the three different tabs. We have description on the left. We have subscription details in the middle, and we have rules, eligibility, and restrictions on the right. Um, usually on the left, the um, description is where it will always start. And that's usually a great place to find answers to most of your questions. So if you if you were able to scroll down this screenshot, um, you would see there's a lot of breakdowns. Um, a lot of the questions that people were asking in the Q&A about like um, functionality and what applications were like included with Creative Cloud, things like that. You'll always kind of find that information listed there on that left description tab. The middle tab is really great to go look for more details about the product or the subscription or the access to discounted rates. Um, for products that aren't subscription based, you'll usually see it say um, details on service costs. And you'll go in there and you can check, you know, usually their system requirements are listed in there. You can see, you know, if it is a subscription product, can existing subscribers apply this to their existing commercial or retail account? Some partners allow us to do that, some partners don't. And usually it just has to do with how their systems work. They wanna work with everybody, but if their system can't apply a nonprofit billing code, then they ask you to start a new account to kind of get access to certain products. So always really important that description and tab on the left and then the middle tab, which can kind of change names in the middle there. Those two are the ones I highly recommend, always thoroughly, thoroughly reading. It answers most of your questions. It usually has a great breakdown of costs, um, lets you know if it's a one-time fee, if it's gonna be an annual fee. For example, QuickBooks Online here is an annual fee paid to TechSoup, $75 per year. Um, there's no additional cost to Intuit, unless you wanna get an add-on product like, uh, like payroll. 
So that's all detailed here. We have a link on this page to our FAQ, which Nick highlighted earlier. Highly recommend anyone interested in QuickBooks Online products. Really great FAQ we've got that really breaks things down. Um, this is also one of those products that, you know, you can't apply this to an existing QuickBooks Online account. You do have to start a new one. But we do have in our FAQ the instructions on how you can transfer your data from your commercial account to your new nonprofit, -ly, nonprofit discounted uh, account. So those are the two main tabs, left and middle. Then we also have this tab on the right, the rules, eligibility, and restrictions. This one is um, more comes up when you're having issues adding, like trying to check out with the product um, from your cart. Um, basically, our partners and TechSoup have different restrictions and rules. Some partners have a rule where you can only request a certain number of products per year. Uh, QuickBooks, for example, or Intuit, for example, only allows you to uh, request one QuickBooks product per fiscal year, which is July 1st through June 30th. Um, and so that means with QuickBooks Online, you would get the initial subscription and then you'd use your quantity allotment once a year to renew that product. And that's again, usually detailed in the middle tab when you have the subscription details. Um, so if you're trying to check out and you're like, why isn't it letting me check out with three of these? A lot of times it's a great idea to go check that rules, eligibility and restrictions. It will highlight if there's any restrictions on the quantity allotment. It will highlight restrictions on some organizations or some partners don't, uh, don't look into donating or discounting products over a certain budget. Location can be a factor, lots of different things. So once you're qualified um, with TechSoup and you're trying to access products, just keep that in mind. That it's a good idea to check if you're eligible based on a ton of different types of restrictions and eligibility requirements that are put forth by our uh, partners. Um, and I do always like to put a caveat to that. Our partners would love to help everyone out there, but a lot of them have to you know, budget how many keys or licenses or accesses that they're doing per their own fiscal year. And so they do sometimes put a cap on how many they provide to us. So it makes them have to narrow their focus on maybe working with certain types of organizations or certain organizations with under a certain budget. It's not a comment on what you do or how you do it. It's just them narrowing their philanthropic focus to meet their own goals. So always like to throw that out there just in case you ever run into something like, why can't I check out? It's just based on how they've set up their program and what types of organizations and budgets and locations they're looking to work with at this time. Um, something to keep in mind too is that if you're US based, but you have operations outside the US, um, you cannot request products for your non US based uh, organizations. Uh, you will want them to go to our partners in their country. We do have partners in pretty much every country around the world that's not embargoed. And that's where your um, location outside the US can go, get registered, get qualified under that country's um, eligibility requirements for nonprofit status, things like that. And then they'll be able to access that directly there. So there is an option out there for your branch locations outside the US, but something to keep in mind, this is US based only. A lot of these products won't work outside long-term of the US. Awesome. Um, and then uh, next slide, please. So another place I like to point out how to navigate the website is how do you get to our, our help resources? So in the top right corner there, I've got a little arrow pointing to it. There is a help button. So you, when you click on that help button, it will take you to our uh, help page. This is where you can go through um, our top top or help topics that you'll see it automatically opens on. You can also click that blue frequently asked questions to switch over to our FAQ. And you'll see then below there, there's a different um, pathways for different types of support. Um, you know, if you're looking to partner with us in a PR sense, there's a way to connect with our PR team. Um, there have our fax machine if you need to fax us any documents for security, things along those lines. Um, if you're looking for customer service support though, to talk to client services, that's when you're gonna click on contact us, and that will take you to this next page. And perfect. So on this next page, it's our contact us page. There's three ways you can get in touch with us. We have our contact us form that you fill out um, that will come to our queues. And within three to five business days, client services will get back to you. Um, we also have a phone number that is available at the bottom of this page that is available from 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you've missed that window, you might want to submit a contact us form. Or we have a brand new support feature, our chat support, that's available on most website pages for TechSoup.org. And it's that little orange blurb that's in the bottom there that you can click. 
And that's usually available from, I believe, my next slide has the exact time. So I believe it's seven to four Pacific Standard Time that that's available. So if you miss our phone hours, you can still talk to someone live via that chat option. Or if it's an non-urgent issue and you just want to get some more information, maybe the contact us form um, is the best option for you. Again, can take us a couple of business days to get back to you. We are a nonprofit ourselves. And sometimes when we have rushes, you know, we try our best to get back to folks. And we appreciate everyone's patience with the emails. Um, we usually get back in three to five business days. Uh, next slide, please. So I've got here, again, the hours of sitting out. So we are in the office. I say in the office since we're mostly remote. So I put quotes around that. But uh, client services is usually available Monday through Friday, unless you know, like this upcoming weekend, we have Labor Day weekend. So we won't be in the office on Monday. Um, but we will have uh, usually Monday through Friday, people manning our phones, chats, and answering emails. Uh, chat, as I mentioned, is 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, phone support, which I've listed the phone number there, again, is from 7 a.m. to 12. And then contact us form is usually three to five business days. Something to keep in mind with client services, I kind of touched on it at the beginning when I opened my presentation, is that um, we are not tech support. Um, what we can assist you with is managing your tech soup accounts information. Um, along those lines, login issues, you want to update your budget, you need help reviewing what, you know, some information that you think might need to be updated, things like that we can help you with. Eligibility questions, as I mentioned before, there is, um, you know, restrict, there can be, it's not every partner, but there can be restrictions on your organization type, budget, location, things like that. So we can answer questions about that. We can also always do a fresh review. If you think that it's not accurate, we're happy to look that over for you and give you a determination on if it needs to be updated mm -hmm. or if it is good to go. We do do periodic reviews. Um, so we try to, you know, make sure we're catching what you're doing now and not what you did like five years ago. But you know what, you can always reach out to us if you'd like a fresh review and have it looked at. Um, we can also help you navigate resources um, and with requesting products on our website, TechSoup.org. Um, something to keep in mind is that we have a ton of partners with a ton of products and we're not tech support. So we're not really able to make official recommendations because we're not familiar with your hardware, with what software you've got installed, with what's going on. So that's when you want to go look at those IT services that Nick highlighted earlier. We have a great consultation form you can go to get started with and get that remote IT um, or tech support um, from one of our tech support partners. Um, so that kind of highlights what I was going to say is what can we not assist you with? IT support, um, product support. If you're having trouble downloading, installing, the software is not working all of a sudden, that's a question for the partner that created the product. So if Adobe, your Adobe product's not working, that's when you'd want to go to Adobe for support. If your QuickBooks Online wasn't working, you'd want to go to Intuit for support, et cetera, et cetera. Um, same thing goes for in-depth product functionality questions. We have so many partners with so many products that it's really impossible for our team, which is not that large, to become experts in every single product offered. They're the same product that's on available on the commercial or retail market. So it's really easy just to contact the partner that created it. So if you have questions about how does QuickBooks Online work and our FAQ doesn't answer your questions and our product page doesn't answer your questions, go back to Intuit and ask them, hey, can you give me a rundown of some of the features I'm looking into? So that's just the kind of the different, uh, just wanted to highlight where we help and where we can't help because we just don't have that training. Nobody wants me installing their office on their computer. I, I, most of my tech support ability is turning my computer off, turning it back on, clearing my cache and cookies in my browser, and then I reach out to our own help desk support. So just keep that in mind that we're here to support your account, answer some basic questions, highlight where you can find things, but anything really in depth or product support or IT support related, you're going to want to go to an IT support specialist, or you're going to want to go to the partner that created the product and provided the product through their nonprofit uh, program on TechSoup's website. Perfect. And that's, I believe that's my last slide here. Um, so I'm sure we will talk to you soon. My team, client services, if you ever reach out, it will be us and we look forward to assisting you. Great. Thank you so much, um, Kelly. And um, Thanks everybody who joined our webinar today. Um, we've got a couple of minutes before the top of the hour again. And I know once again, that we covered an awful lot during the last hour. 
Um, and, and I really want to just bring it all back for everybody, like in a very simple way again, to say, just, just please remember that at the core of all of this, TechSoup is a nonprofit just like you. And our mission is to help you use tech to do whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, and I think what's really amazing about TechSoup as an organization, and I've, I've been working here for several years, is that despite working in technology, it's profoundly human-centered. It's very much about real people helping other real people. And so if you have questions about the technology you think you should be using, or about the technology perhaps that you already own, one thing TechSoup can for sure do is get you headed in the right direction. Engage with us. Ask us some questions through that contact form Kelly was asking about. Use the chat feature. Check around the site to see if there are products on there that would be helpful to your organization. And if you have questions, just reach out. The worst thing that could happen is that we say, we don't know. And then we could try and go and get an answer for you. But that's very different than the experience you'll have, you know, trying to reach out to a giant global technology corporation, which may have, you know, 30 or 40,000 people at any moment in time writing in and asking questions all at the same time. TechSoup is here to serve nonprofits. So if you have questions and you need help, we're going to do our best to serve you. So please engage with us. Use the features that we covered today in the website. Um, and as Aretha said, we'll be sharing this deck in a follow-up email to all of you who attended today. Um, it has lots of live links in the deck that will take you straight to the place on the site that you're trying to get to, to look at, you know, for instance, QuickBooks or Help Desk, et cetera. So use those links, um, check out the offers on the site. Um, and uh, once again, I, I really appreciate all of you joining us today. Watch out for the email with the deck in it, and um, we'll take it from there. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.